Thank you all for joining for this session, because I understand this is the last session of Spark Summit, and I hope that I share some knowledge about Apache Ignite ML library. I think that if you join this session, you're interested in alternative approaches to Spark ML, and this talk will be concentrated uh, on another, yet another distributed ML library, which can be used with Spark together. Okay, let's start. I am Alexey Zinoyev, and as was said, I'm flying from the opposite side of the Earth, and my native time is 4 a.m., but it's a very deep night, but I, I'm trying to talk with you about Apache Ignite. Uh, I'm Java developer, first of all, and most of content today and uh, snippets of code will be written in Java. I'm sorry for Python developers. I will talk about uh, a little bit about Python later. I am a distributed ML enthusiast and Apache Ignite committer. Uh, and I also am happy father and husband who sponsor <laughs> this tour to uh, United States with many time. Uh, I wanted to visit this summit uh, for a few years. I, I'm using Spark for five years. Uh, I don't remember exactly the version uh, from uh, what version I started my using of Spark, uh, and Spark ML was uh, my first experience with Spark. Uh, it hasn't, uh, it hadn't pipeline. That time when I used, uh, the API was based on RDD blocks. I think most of you remember that. And also, let's go together through the different uh, MLDL are popular frameworks. I think you know most of them. We can see Apache Mahout. Maybe somebody remember that framework at the top of the Hadoop. I worked with that. Uh, I think all of you know TensorFlow. Maybe somebody here about DL4J. It, uh, it's a Java library to create a different uh, neural network architecture to uh, join if Spark, for example, scikit-learn, of course, PyTorch, Keras, and et cetera. And uh, what's the reason to add yet another library here? Uh, let's start from the Python. If you have petabytes of data, then the Python libraries like scikit-learn, uh, I, I really like scikit-learn, but <laughs> it will not be able to process even a small fraction of the data for building a machine learning model. For example, if you have one terabyte, for example. Uh, Spark ML is a good answer on this question. Uh, Spark incorporates a truly remarkable set of classical machine learning algorithms, and that allow us uh, to perform iterative uh, calculation on data in memory, right? Um, but what is bad this Spark ML? I know that this is the last session and can say something about Spark ML. Uh, I, I, I wanted to say that Spark ML is bad. But something goes wrong <laughs> with Spark ML. First of all, it doesn't support uh, our common approach of building modern ensembles as stacking, boosting, and begging. Of course, we could find um, gradient boosted trees and random forests, but uh, it's very small, our movement in this area. Uh, also, it doesn't support online learning for all algorithms. It supports uh, only a few models like linear regression and k-means and streaming mode. I mean, uh, then I talk about uh, online, uh, online learning, I mean that we should have ability to join two models, for example, in streaming mode. With structured streaming, maybe with old uh, day streams, but we have no this ability in Spark. Maybe you could find something in Spark packages, but I'm not sure. Uh, also, uh, it has a lot of data transformation overhead from data source presented in Parquet, for example, to label it vectors internally in different ML algorithms. Uh, it has hard integration with TensorFlow Cafe. You could find on the GitHub different projects like uh, one project from Yahoo, TensorFlow on Spark, and etc. Today, uh, we could hear uh, the good talk about uh, Spark, Harvard, TensorFlow integration, but you can understand the, uh, how long this chain. Uh, also, that's not all. <laughs> 
uh, part of algorithms are using sparse matrix. I hate sparse matrix because matrix computation like multiplication can be easily parallelized, of course, but many matrix operations are not easy to implement in distributed version. You should have all matrix on all nodes of your computing cluster. That's bad. Uh, also, uh, you could find in Spark ML several unfinished approaches of model inference, model serving. I found where one great Google Doc where Databricks and other Spark uh, developers discussed a few years ago how we should save models from Spark. Maybe via PMML library, maybe somebody used it, maybe via GPMML library, via saving. Uh, to parquet file, how it uh, implemented uh, now. Maybe uh, you should use mlib or mlflow. There are a lot of different approaches, uh, and um, part of them are not finished. For example, are saving uh, to easy readable PML format, which can be understand understandable via scikit-learn, etc. Uh, it doesn't support AutoML algorithms for hyperparameter tuning. I mean, not only grid search, how it's implemented in pipelines, but really smart hyperparameter tuning. Uh, and ML algorithms internally uses MLlib, which should be deprecated, of course, but it doesn't rewritten totally on data, data frames, right? If you will open the code of different ML algorithms, you will see how it translated to ML lib calls. And the main problem with Spark ML, from my perspective, I've tried to prepare a lot of different PRs to Spark ML. You grew old before your PR will be merged. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. It's a very huge problem with Spark. You need years uh, to add a reasonable feature if you're not a uh, Spark I don't know, PMC, you have no chance, in my opinion. Uh, and this is a bad thing with Apache Spark ML. For me, for me, as an active user of Apache Spark, I want uh, to add new features. I want to take new features from distributed machine learning today. Yesterday, I don't know, two days ago, but not in the uh, unclear future. And uh, this is the reason why I joined to Apache Ignite community. I understand that uh, you, maybe you don't know what is Apache Ignite, but this is another Apache uh, project uh, under Apache license, of course. Uh, this is like of in-memory SQL database. It supports SQL internally. It uh, uses uh, uh, different Java cache-like structures and etc. And uh, one year ago, uh, the ML module under Apache Ignite was started. Uh, Apache Ignite uh, can be used as a backend, uh, for example, for Apache Spark 2. You can use uh, special memory structures to speed up RDDs, data frames, and etc. Uh, uh, for example, in Stack Overflow or on Apache Ignite, the least you can find a lot of examples how to use uh, uh, they both together. I mean, Apache Ignite as database or as a backend for our speed up of Apache Spark, but I'm trying to explain what is an Apache Ignite ML model and how it used to gather this Spark. There is now so many ways, but let's start. Uh, first of all, we want uh, to set up Apache Ignite cluster near the Spark cluster to train on Spark data. All data, first of all, located in Apache Spark, in Parquet, in Hive, I don't know, in uh, maybe as a result of uh, transformation processing, as you wish. And Spark connect as one of data source for Apache Ignite ML. I will have a lot of kind of architecture diagram of different application uh, with pseudo symbols. And uh, let's start from the very, very simple example. And train data should be loaded in Ignite in memory caches from Spark data frames. And we have several ways to do that. This special form of write operator in Spark. You know this data frame, write, mode, and etc. I think most of you use that. Uh, or if you want to control loading of each K value pair, please use a special subclass uh, of cache store. Cache store is special interface in Apache Ignite to implement different data sources like a GDBC uh, oriented databases uh, like PostgreSQL, Oracle, etc. Uh, uh, the first 
approach uh, via bright format Ignite. Out of box, Spark doesn't know about Ignite, of course. Uh, so we have to start uh, with a couple of extra parameters. For example, uh, we could run PySpark with Ignite jars. Uh, next, uh, we should load the data into a Spark data frame. For example, here we read something from JSON file. Uh, it can be passenger from Titanic data set. Uh, you can do any manipulation you like at this point, adding or removing columns, uh, computing new values, etc. All preprocessing can be uh, uh, can be did in the Spark, uh, and after that we should write it out to Ignite. Uh, here you uh, can find another approach, uh, the implementation of cache store. This is an interface in Ignite that gives us a basic set of operations uh, which you should implement. If you know Java, if you know Java syntax, it, uh, it will be easier. Uh, you should implement a lot of methods and define functions how to extract data from data frame row uh, to uh, Ignite cache value. We should uh, export data frame rows to Ignite cache. Okay, let's continue. Also, uh, for training, our Igni Apache Ignite supports a kind of partition-based data sets. Uh, it reminds me RDD uh, in Spark with basic functionality, but with another internal representation uh, based, in, uh, based on Apache Ignite caches. Uh, also, uh, the current release supports a lot of algorithms, and I think that uh, in release 2.7, we have a parity in algorithms with Apache Spark. But uh, the release 2.7 uh, was a few months ago. You can download our master branch to build this uh, and use new algorithms too. I will talk about our next release, which will be published in a few weeks, I hope. But you can find all these algorithms in master branch today, as I said. Uh, currently, the framework contains enough implementation of classical algorithms. Uh, you, can, you, you could find here logistic regression, SVM, decision trees, random forest, and kind of approximate near neighborhood. This is improvement of KNN, which uh, could avoid us uh, loading of all neighborhoods uh, from training phase to the prediction phase. It has um, very good approximity, uh, uh, good uh, distributed implementation, and uh, effectiveness of KNN. Um, also, it supports our regression algorithms. Uh, different decision tree regression, random forest, gradient boosted tree regression. No, uh, we should know that uh, new algorithms could be added very easily here. Uh, of course, we could not avoid a gentleman set with narrow networks. We have implementation of multi-layer perceptron. Uh, it has many hyperparameters which can be tuned uh, via hyperparameter tuning grid. And let's build the model. Uh, how to train the model on the given Ignite cache or Ignite SQL table loaded from Spark. It's very easy. Uh, we load this uh, via cache store, for example. After that, we create a data cache. Uh, we should uh, build something like a vectorizer. It reminds me of vector assembler. Uh, where we should uh, pass as a parameters indexes of our indexes of uh, elements uh, in array or a different interval structure, um, index of label, are to build a special internal vectors to train on them. After that, we could uh, define the trainer and uh, feed the trainer to the data cache. Uh, also, we should evaluate our model. Uh, we couldn't evade that. Uh, for example, if you need to calculate the classification metrics, accuracy, for example, and different uh, classification metrics, you could use uh, evaluator to evaluate something. It has no state, it's like a pure functions. Uh, of course, with Sun will die before we implement all of the algorithms of scikit-learn, but we could try. Uh, the amount of preprocessor could be uh, compared with Spark, except the NLP preprocessor. We uh, haven't something like stop words remover and etc. is a separate task and uh, currently the NLP techniques are not supported. We are trying to integrate uh, this with open NLP library. Uh, of course it has different scaling preprocessor, a lot of them, uh, one hot encoding, you know that, uh, and the code with preprocessing looks like 
this. Uh, the Java code with intermediate data transformation is presented here on the slide. Uh, all processors are lazy uh, and are functions by nature that takes uh, Ignite cache, a uh, parent preprocessor to build the chain and makes labeled vector uh, with transformed by this function data. Uh, also, sometimes, you know, it's difficult to evaluate how good this or that binary classification model and uh, Apache Ignite, of course, supports different uh, versions of uh, cross-validation, not only k-fault uh, k cross-validation, how it uh, implemented in Spark, but different, uh, how it's implemented in scikit-learn. Uh, of course, we could build a pipeline, whole pipeline. I think each ML developer uh, wants to avoid noisy fit method call. Uh, and the idea of scikit-learn and Spark pipelines is implemented in Ignite 2. If you know that Spark ML pipelines was cop were copied from scikit-learn pipelines, uh, I read about that. Uh, and in this slide, you could see the whole pipeline uh, in Apache Ignite. You could add preprocessing trainer, uh, a lot of them if you need. Uh, final trainer, for example here, decision tree classification trainer, at uh, cross-validation like a scoring, uh, different values of parameter grid, and in this slide we're trying to combine together pipeline data, classification metrics, hyperparameters tuning, and cross-validation to get the best model. At this point you can see that Ignite and Spark has a parity in classic ML, in the API, and et cetera. It can be used uh, without, I don't know, big gap, big knowledge gap, uh, uh, with uh, not so many time to switch your code from Spark to Ignite, but this is not all. Uh, ensemble methods uh, were added in Apache Ignite a few months ago. Uh, there are method algorithms that combine several machine learning techniques into one predictive model. In order to decrease variance, is by begging, bias, is by boosting, you know, or improve predictions by staking. Let's look at one of them, staking. All of them are supported in Apache Ignite, but I'm uh, I'd like staking because it was implemented by myself. <laughs> staking involves training a uh, learning algorithm to combine the predictions of several other learning algorithms. First, all of the other algorithms are trained using uh, the available data. This is the first step. Then a combiner algorithm here, it's logistic regression, um, is trained to make a final prediction uh, using all the predictions of the other algorithms like an input. Uh, here you can see how two decision trees at the first level and a logistic regression model uh, on the second level uh, could be uh, used together in the, by the staking API uh, to build special staking model to predict something like uh, each other model in the first level or in the second level. Uh, you could add more levels and combine it uh, by more com in more complex way, of course, but I think we have no time to uh, light all these approaches. Also, you know my heartbreak about Spark ML. This is uh, online learning. As I said, Spark supports uh, merging of two models only for a few old models in ML lib. Uh, then the uh, started the development of Apache Ignite, we keep in mind this ability to add online machine learning and in each algorithm we should implement interface update methods. We couldn't add new algorithms without implementing uh, online learning for this kind of model. And currently all the models are support, uh, supporting uh, the merging of two models or, or the chain of models if you want, but uh, in the current version without um, weights. I think that in the future it will be added, but currently you should do it manually. But uh, we can merge two models like, um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, two packets of milk. Uh, and uh, in these techniques, of course, you could use uh, Spark uh, train model there, load the model to Apache Ignite. I will talk a little bit later about uh, inference uh, the uh, Apache Spark. You could train on your batches of data uh, which uh, can be loaded from Apache Kafka 
uh, Apache Ignite has a good uh, Kafka data streamer to load data from Apache Kafka, train on this uh, portion of data and uh, merge all the model into one by special law, which is uh, implemented internally in our library. Of course, you could define your law by your hands, but up to you. Uh, also, for example, on this slide, uh, you could see an example of updating uh, original KN model. I know that Spark doesn't support KN model, and the people hate this because uh, it works not very good on the big data, but may maybe we have a small data <laughs> to run the KN. I understand. Uh, it's, it's only for this slide. Uh, we have our KN model, which was fitted uh, from the data cache. Uh, this special set of parameters. We train uh, another model, and uh, we could uh, update our previous model, model one, with new portion of data, with new data which was loaded into another cache uh, using the same vectorizer. For example, uh, model two, this is updated model. Um, also, our Apache Ignite has from the start uh, the integration, close cooperation with TensorFlow, and I'm very honest to say that our Apache Ignite data set was contributed to TensorFlow uh, by uh, developer Anton Dmitriev. Uh, now it's part of TensorFlow contrib package. You can uh, download Anaconda and uh, push something into Ignite cluster if you have Ignite cluster and uh, use uh, Apache Ignite as a distributed backend for TensorFlow calculation, not via Harobot. You can use uh, Apache Ignite directly. Uh, this is a special tool set I will talk about uh, it a little bit more. Uh, first of all, it has Ignite data set that provides ability to feed training data from Apache Ignite and train on them in TensorFlow directly. Also, it supports, um, uh, for example, I, I'm not sure if you see on this slide, uh, example of uh, Python code uh, with TensorFlow where you can connect to Ignite data set and grab data from there, uh, and for example, to print them in TensorFlow session. Uh, also, uh, it supports distributed training mode, as I said. Uh, and the main idea behind the distributed neural network training is the ability to calculate gradients of loss function, squares of the errors, for example, on every partition of data in terms of horizontal partitioning, of course, and then sum them uh, on the reducer phase. Uh, I think it's stable version. Or, it's merged to uh, TensorFlow a few months ago, and I think in TensorFlow 2.0 it will be available too. Uh, Ignite cluster for TensorFlow like um, Yarn for Spark. It's like a simple cluster manager uh, for backend training, and etc. You, you should think about that in terms of cluster manager, I think. Uh, of course, you could use your typical TensorFlow instruments like uh, TensorFlow board, and etc. Also, yet one question, which is very interesting: how to uh, work with model which was trained in another system by another frameworks? Uh, this is question of model inference support. Uh, inference is an important part. Of is important part of machine learning in production, of course, and uh, Apache Ignite supports inference uh, from TensorFlow, from Spark via different approaches. Uh, this is a direct uh, parsing of Spark uh, parquet files, which was uh, getting by right method, you know, model save to parquet file from this method via um, uh, prediction, uh, prediction on MLLib runtime. Um, also, Apache Ignite has uh, XGBoost model parser, and I think that in future we will add more for MXNet, uh, for PyTorch, and etc. Uh, how it can be used with MLLib our system? We experiment with different model inference, so we don't know what would be final decision. Uh, this example demonstrates how to import MLLib model and use imported model for distributed inference in Apache Ignite. Uh, eight here is number of service instances maintaining to make distributed inference. Um, uh, here you get uh, asynchronously predict something on the vector uh, constructed from two values. Um, also, 
we have a Spark ML model parser. As I said, uh, you can try, you, you could train something uh, in Apache Spark, get the model, uh, save this model to Parquet file via Spark. You shouldn't uh, get Apache Ignite here. After that, you can load it in Apache Ignite and, for example, update by the new portion of data, train new model on Apache Ignite, and merge them using uh, online learning, which is presented in Apache Ignite. This is how it can be used. Uh, this is an example of our typical Spark model pipeline. You know, very, very short pipeline. You, first of all, vectors, uh, make vectors from data frames, uh, columns using special vector assembler. After that, you transform data frame to vectorized data frame with dropping rows. So after that, you set up the decision tree classifier, train the models, and save the model via write operator. Uh, how it can be used in Apache Ignite. Uh, you could load this data, new portion of data from data cache, uh, define the vectorizer, parse uh, the data via the path to the file. Uh, also, you should choose one of supported model, but currently we support all Spark models. You know the set of Spark models uh, isn't changed from time to time. It's very easy to support all versions. Um, and of course, you could evaluate new model, or maybe you can use online learning or something else. I think maybe uh, after this session, you will return to home, and maybe next week somebody download the Apache Ignite and trying to build your own application with Apache Spark, Apache Kafka, Apache Ignite, train a lot of models, merge them in Apache Ignite, and predict something, and maybe add something from XGBoost, and etc. You know how it can be <laughs> cool. Uh, I hope, I hope. Uh, as I said, Apache Ignite had a lot of connectors and can be uh, your own in-memory database, uh, which can uh, get a lot of data from different data sources, and Apache Spark can be one of these sources. Uh, of course, please reduce the data, because it's in-memory database, and we couldn't spill something on disk. <laughs> but uh, the, the, it can be fast. Uh, also. The small roadmap, if you're interested in Apache Ignite ML after my talk, uh, give me a few seconds to light the roadmap. We are planning next features, and the next release is NLP support, Spike, Spark pipeline inference support. Currently, it parses only uh, Spark models, but not the whole pipeline. Whole pipeline are supported via MLLeap. Uh, ML, ML <laughs> uh, also, we hope to add DL4J integration, uh, to support another Java developers who are uh, trying to do this, this Spark and generate a lot of Spark tasks here. And I'm trying to add uh, more approximate email algorithms like ANN, the approximate version of KNN, which could be more faster than current implementation, uh, which are not approximate. But I hope that we can um, keep the uh, accuracy of these algorithms and where it can be used uh, in the distributed nature. Also, in conclusion, uh, Apache Spark and Apache Ignite could work together, I hope. Uh, they are friends. Apache Ignite ML is a son of Apache Spark ML. First of all, we learn a lot uh, from uh, Spark ML algorithms sources, and uh, we are trying to find faults and maybe incorrect decisions and re-implement uh, it correctly in uh, Apache Ignite. I hope that we did it. Uh, new features and capabilities of distributed ML uh, learning could be a reason to taste Ignite ML, I hope. And you could load Spark models to Ignite and continue your work with them uh, via online learning algorithms and etc. And it's very to, it's very easy to add new feature to Apache Ignite ML. You could write me. I'm Apache Ignite committer. I, I could help to create your ticket in Apache Ignite Jira to become a contributor. Let's discuss something in Apache Ignite developer list or user list if you need more functions in Apache Ignite ML library. Uh, OK, you are welcome. And don't forget to cite me as a reviewer if you created a pull request to Apache Ignite. Thank you, thank you. If you have any question, you can ask me. We have a, a lot of time, I think. Or we could go to the uh, corridor and discuss later. Thank you.